Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be looking at this, the new 8GB Raspberry Pi 4. And if this were not exciting enough, we're also going to check out the new Raspberry Pi OS, as well as the firmware update that allows a Raspberry Pi 4 to boot from a USB drive. Right, here we have our Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model. So uh, let's get inside, bring in a Stanley knife and just cut through the glue down uh, there. Why do Raspberry Pis not have resealable boxes like every other single board computer? Anyway, there we are, we've finally got in. Oh look, there's the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 8GB. Always nice to uh, have a new Pi. So uh, let's put this down next to its other Raspberry Pi 4 brothers. And uh, there we are. So uh, here we've now got the 2 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, which cost us $35 or £34. The 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, which cost us $55 or £54. And the new 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, which cost $75 or £74. And there was a 1 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 when the board first came out, but this was removed from the consumer facing range in February 2020 when the 2 gigabyte model was reduced in price to $35. Now, these boards are pretty much identical, save for the difference in the DDR4 RAM chip, which is located next to the system on a chip. The, the RAM chip is the chip here. And on the 2GB model, this chip is labelled 9LD77D9W8Z, whereas on the 4GB model, if you can just about make it out here on, on my board, it's labelled D9WHV. And on the new 8 gigabyte model, it's labeled D9ZCL. So that's the way you can tell the difference between these boards. For the 8 gigabyte model, they've also made a few changes to the power supply arrangements because it has to have slightly higher current peaks to run this 8 gigabyte RAM chip. And what they've done is to take some components from behind the USB 2 sockets and they put these new components in next to one of the micro HDMI ports. Oh, and if you're wondering, the compatibility issue that prevented the first Pi 4 from using some USB-C power supplies was fixed when version 1.2 of the board was released in February 2020, and it doesn't affect the newer 8GB model. Just for fun, I thought we'd also take this board and compare it to the very first Raspberry Pi 1 Model B from 2012. So, if we take this and we put it down here like this, we can see the massive changes in PIDEM which have taken place over the last eight years. Not least, we've moved from a 32-bit single-core 700 megahertz processor to a 64-bit quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor. And we've gone from either a 256 or 512 megabytes of RAM to a 8 gigabytes of RAM. We've gone from a two USB 2 ports to a two USB 2 and two USB 3 ports. We've gone from a 26 to 40 GPIO pins. We've gone from a 1 to 2 HDMI ports, although admittedly these have shrunk. But uh, somewhere along the way, we've lost the RCA composite video connector, which I always found rather reassuring. Right, I've now connected up our 8GB Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm also going to pop this uh, Pimeroni fan shim onto the end like that to very quickly give us some rather effective active cooling. And I've also inserted a micro SD card into the, the Pi 4 8 gigabyte, onto which I've written the May 2020 version of Raspberry Pi OS, which is the latest operating system for the Pi from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So if I now turn on the power, our board will boot up. And if I use the magic of filmmaking to pause the splash screen, we can see that we are welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop powered by Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit which is in effect the latest version of Raspbian, but with a new name. And as I hope this makes clear and contrary to some reports online, Raspberry Pi OS is not a 64-bit version of Raspbian. However, as a 32-bit operating system cannot address more than 4 gigabytes of RAM, Raspberry Pi OS does contain some workarounds to allow the use of 8 gigabytes of RAM on the latest Pi 4. And uh, if we go here to uh, Accessories and to uh, Task Manager, we can see this is the case. There we are, let's just drag it out. I've scaled 
my fonts as usual, but you can see here we've got uh, just under eight gigabytes of RAM freely available. A little bit will be used for the GPU, things like that. So it really is amazing, isn't it? We've got eight gigabytes of RAM available to us here on a Raspberry Pi. And to make absolutely clear what's going on, because there is some confusion around, let's launch a browser and uh, take a look at the blog post which announced the Pi 4 eight gigabyte model. And uh, if we scroll down a bit here, we get to uh, this section where the uh, first paragraph opens with three very important lines, which makes it clear that the default operating system image uses a 32-bit LPAE kernel and a 32-bit user land. And this allows multiple processes to share all eight gigabytes of memory on the 32-bit system, subject to the restriction that no single process can use more than three gigabytes. And in this context, it's well worth noting that every tab you open in Chromium in the Chromium browser is a separate process. And if we look a bit further down here, you'll see that they've actually launched a beta of a 64-bit version of a Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on the ARM version of Debian 64-bit with a Raspberry Pi desktop. And just to be absolutely clear, it says it explicitly here, Raspberry Pi OS is the name for both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the latest operating system from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And indeed, we can see that if we look at the downloads here, click on downloads there and go to, uh, there we are, Raspberry Pi OS, previously called uh, Raspbian. And uh, if we scroll down, you'll see 32-bit, 32-bit, 32-bit. Although there is that 64-bit beta, which I'll be looking at on my channel, I'm sure, at some point in the future. And if you want to know what I think about all this, you can always go to the Community tab on the Explaining Computers uh, YouTube channel, which is uh, sitting over here. And if you look down uh, there, you'll see we've been having a long chat about this, uh, all about what's going on with uh, Raspbian and uh, Raspberry Pi OS, all that type of stuff, always make sure you check out the community tab on the Explaining Computers channel. And uh, talking of YouTube, I'm sure you want to know what uh, video playback is like here on the Raspberry Pi OS. Let's just to bring up there for my uh, sample 1080p clip. There it is. Just let it uh, come to life. And uh, there we are. We'll bring up a uh, stats for nerds. This is playing a 1080p. And it's doing it uh, pretty well. I'm, I'm impressed with the playback of the uh, 1080p footage here in uh, Raspberry Pi OS. I know they said Raspberry in there, but no, it's a uh, Raspberry Pi OS. There, there are some drop frames as we can see at the top. It's not absolutely perfect, but a uh, 1080p playback in Raspberry Pi OS is in my view perfectly acceptable. And a uh, 720p playback is a uh, very, very good indeed. And we should note we're not just talking here about the eight gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi running a Raspberry Pi OS, because if we transition to the two gigabyte Pi 4 running Raspberry Pi OS, here we are, we're on the two gigabyte board here now. If we uh, again play exactly the same clip, let's set it off and uh, full screen, you will see that um, playback is pretty much identical. It'll get to full screen eventually. Please do it, there we are. We'll bring up uh, stats for nerds. And uh, again, we have got some drop frames. We seem to get more things start off, as you can see here, but as time goes on, things are improved. But uh, this is playing our HD footage uh, pretty well as well. So it does seem that in a Raspberry Pi OS, browser-based playback of a streaming media is, uh, is pretty good. Certainly when it, much better than it was, you know, that not that long ago, when the Raspberry Pi 4 was uh, first launched. So uh, this is all uh, pretty good. Now, uh, other than the fact we can uh, play media better than we used to be, and we've got access to eight gigabytes of RAM, which are both uh, pretty good things. There's not that much which is different in the Raspberry Pi OS compared to the previous version of a Raspberry. But there are a few things. For example, if we go to the volume control here and right click, we can see that uh, HDMI and the AV jack, the 3.5 millimeter audio output, are now treated as a different uh, ALSA or advanced Linux sound architecture audio devices. And the other thing that's different, if we look at the menu, where the same sort of programs are here as we had previously, there isn't a great deal of change here. There didn't need to be, everything was pretty good. No point in changing things for the sake of it. But if we look into help, you'll see we've got this thing called Bookshelf, which is a rather exciting. And this gives access to free copies of many of the magazines and the books published by Raspberry Pi Press, which includes a Magpie magazine, Lots of really good books on coding, stuff like that. This is fantastic to see here. You can click on these, download a PDF, the Hackspace magazine, the Wireframe magazine, 
And uh, the most important thing here, of course, is if we go to uh, issue uh, 83 of the Magpie, let's open that up uh, there. And uh, if we go down to page uh, 84, as you can see, there is a, an interview with me, which I think is very exciting as it's the first time I've been directly featured in an operating system. Right, for my next trick, I've got our two gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 hooked up to the Blackmagic Design Video Assist 4K here as its monitor. And as you can see, we've got a Raspberry Pi OS on the display. And what I'm going to do is to shut it down like uh, this and uh, that. The Raspberry Pi 4 will now shut down. We'll see some little flickering of its LED down here. That'll eventually finish when it's fully shut down. Uh, there we are. And I can now turn off the power like that. And what I'm now going to do is to turn over the Raspberry Pi 4 so I can remove its micro SD card on which a Raspberry Pi OS is installed. So I'll get rid of that. And down here, I've got a Corsair Voyager Vega 16 gigabyte USB 3 drive, which I'm going to plug into the, the Raspberry Pi 4 like that. And so I'm now going to power on again. There we are, the Pi is now powered up. And uh, hopefully, if we cross our fingers, the Pi 4 is going to boot up from the USB drive. It seems to be doing things. The uh, raspberries on the screen there are a good indication. Oh, we had the splash screen there for a uh, Raspberry Pi OS. I did prefer it when operating systems had things on the screen when they were booting rather than all this blackness. I like to see some text there, but we don't get it these days. But hopefully, in a second, we will arrive. There we are in a Raspberry Pi. OS, which is booted from uh, this uh, USB drive. It's almost magical, isn't it? We've been waiting for this to happen on the Raspberry Pi 4 for a very long time. And uh, whilst here we booted from a USB drive, we could just as easily have booted from something like this, an SSD with a SATA to a USB 3 adapter. And to make this work, what I've done is I've applied a beta firmware update to a this Pi 4, and in the next section of the video, I'll show you the process I used as we do the same thing to our new 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 model. However, before I do this, it's very important to note that installing beta firmware on your Pi is potentially a very risky thing to do, which may seriously damage the board and leave it unbootable. So, if in any doubt, I would advise waiting for the official rollout of USB boot functionality rather than implementing what I'm about to cover in the next section. Right, all cautions noted, here we are back in Raspberry Pi OS on our 8GB Raspberry Pi 4. And I've opened up a terminal where I've already executed a sudo apt update and a sudo apt full upgrade to ensure Raspberry Pi OS is fully up to date and that we have access to the latest firmware updates. And to check this, if we open up the file manager, there we are. And if we go to a root file system and a libraries and a firmware, and somewhere down here, there should be a Raspberry Pi. If I can scroll down, there we are. Raspberry Pi bootloader. And we can see here the latest stable firmware update is from what uh, the 16th of April, but uh, the latest beta update is here from uh, the 3rd of June. And that's the file I'm going to install. But if you find a later file here, obviously you should use the latest file. So if we go back to the terminal, and we're going to execute uh, this command, VC Gen CMD bootloader version, to show us the uh, current bootloader version, which is the 16th of April version we just saw in the stable releases. But we want to install the latest beta. So what I'm going to do is to do a sudo rpi eprom update minus d minus f are the flags, and then we need to give it the file name and location we were just at, which is uh, that. So uh, we'll just make sure we checked it very carefully. I have, I'll now execute that. There we are, and it tells us the update is appending. So all we need to do now is a sudo and a reboot. And uh, there we are, we've come up again, which is a, a great relief. We clearly haven't broken things uh, entirely. And uh, if we open up the terminal like that, and we find again our uh, VCCMG bootloader version, we can see, yes, we're now running the, uh, the June uh, 3rd, 2020 
bootloader version. So we should be able now to USB boot. So the next thing we need to do is to actually try this out. So I'm going to take this Kingston SSD and plug it into the Pi. And uh, there we are. We'll just cancel whatever's currently there on the drive. And uh, what I'm going to do is to go to uh, Accessories and uh, SD card copier, and we're going to copy Raspberry Pi OS from the SD card on this system, which is there, to this Kingston SSD, which is there. So if I now click on the Start, uh, it'll erase everything on the Kingston drive, yes, that is correct, and this will copy Raspberry Pi OS to that SSD, from which we should then be able to boot. And there we are, it's finished. And if we wish to here, we could simply reboot the Pi and it would reboot from the uh, SSD because the boot order is USB first and then micro SD card. But I'm going to do this in a more exciting, dramatic way. I'm going to close down the Pi and uh, then I'll remove the micro SD card so I've got to get it out. It's stuck. There we are. Micro SD card has been removed from the Pi. The only drive connected is the uh, SSD. So we now uh, turn it on again. And yes, here we are back in Raspberry Pi OS, but this time running from our SSD connected via USB 3. And in fact, if I go to the terminal and maybe do an LS ELK like that, list block devices, you can see very clearly here that uh, we are running from the uh, 128 gigabyte SSD. This is very good news indeed. So uh, there we are. We've entered a whole new era of a Raspberry Pi 4 Pydom with the ability to boot from USB, to boot from, if we wish, an SSD. And I think this is probably even more significant than the launch of this particular new board with eight gigabytes of RAM. Because whilst it's nice to have eight gigabytes of RAM on a Raspberry Pi, for the vast majority of applications a Pi is used for, you don't need eight gigabytes of RAM. And yet the ability to boot from an SSD a faster and more reliable drive, that's a really big development for the world of Pydom, particularly if you want to use a Pi, for example, as a small desktop PC. And we also shouldn't forget the big price difference between this 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 for $75 and, for example, this Raspberry Pi 4 with 2GB model for $35. You can actually buy this 2GB Raspberry Pi 4 and this SATA to USB adapter and this Kingston 128GB SSD for less than the price of this 8GB Raspberry Pi 4, which makes you think, doesn't it? We've now got lots of options in the world of Pi. We need to think very carefully about which boards we buy, which accessories we buy for any particular application. On the 28th of June 2019, the Raspberry Pi 4 was released. And it was a secret launch, but I was lucky enough to be supplied with the board in advance by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, so I could post a video about the Raspberry Pi 4 on the day of release. And I remember it being a very exciting day. A year later, and the Raspberry Pi 4 continues to evolve into a more and more capable single board computer. But what are you doing or what do you want to do with a Raspberry Pi 4? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.